Hi, welcome to my lesson today on pronunciation, the basics. So I'd like to start by looking at the phonemic chart. The phonemic chart is a chart of 44 symbols and letters that represent the sounds of English. Here we have consonants in yellow and we have vowels in grey and the vowels are separated into monothongs and diphthongs. There are five vowels, A, E, I, O, U, but there are 20 different sounds. The way you use this chart is that you look at the word underneath. So here we have sheep. Look at the underlined letters. So we have E and E. So I would say sh, eep. And I highlight the key sound, which is E. I have two dots, so it represents a longer sound. Unlike the word next to it, which is ship, and underlined letter is I, so it's sh, i, p, so i is the sound. If I come over to the diphthongs, here I have the word here, and the underlined letters are e, r, e, ear, ear, two sounds. I can do the same with the consonants, so here I have p, and the sound is p. There are some unusual letters or symbols for some of these words like ch for cheese and j for June. I suggest you pause this slide, go through these words and practice the sounds of the vowels and the consonants. If you want more help, I've included a link of Macmillan's interactive phonemic chart in the description below. Right, phonetics, which is the study of speech and the letter, phonemic letters together um, is very popular in English pronunciation. So all hard copy dictionaries normally include the word and then they have the phonetics that follow, the written pronunciation. Even now on internet dictionaries, this is the Cambridge Dictionary, um, it includes uh, a listening of the word but also it includes the phonetics that follow and here we've got the English and American version. So let's get started and I'm going to show you today why having an understanding of phonetics is important. So I'd like us to start with these two words and I just want you internet people to say these words. So can you just say them now out loud to yourself? Right, quite commonly I find my students pronounce the first word wrongly. Um, so, and the reason is, is because the students often say pronunciation and pronounce, pronunciation and pronounce, but when we look at the phonetics, we see that there's actually a difference. And here, instead of the verb is pronounce, pronounce, but the noun is pronun, pronunciation. So to say this word correctly, you say pronunciation. Um, and then the verb is to pronounce. An important part about phonetics or written phonetics is it highlights a couple of other important points. So not only does it show me the difference in vowel sounds, but it also shows me syllables. So this word is five syllables. One, two, three, four, five, and that's highlighted in the phonetics. Um, it also shows me stress. So it shows me the primary stress, which is on the top but it also shows me the secondary stress as well. So I would pronounce this as pronunciation, pronunciation, pronunciation. Okay, great. So that's three things that phonetics shows us that you may not hear if you listen to the word on an internet dictionary. Right, so we're going to have a bit of fun. What I'd like you to do is that I've chosen 10 words that are problematic for students and I'd like you to see if you can say these words. So pause this slide and go down through this list and see if you can say these words correctly. 
Right, now I'm going to add the phonetics and I'd like you to, do, to pause the slide again and this time look at the phonetics and check your pronunciation to the phonetics and see if there's any differences. Okay, so I'm going to say these words and you can check your pronunciation. So the first word is comfortable, comfortable. The second word is recipe, recipe. The third word is analysis, analysis. The fourth word is aisle, aisle. The fifth word is ballet. Ballet. The sixth word is catastrophe. Catastrophe. And then the adjective is catastrophic. Catastrophic. The seventh word is the capital of Scotland, which is Edinburgh. 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 The eighth is coalition. Coalition. The ninth is facetious, facetious. And the tenth is just a fun word from Disney's film Mary Poppins. Um, and it's pronounced supercalifragilisticexpialidocious. 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 And it's just fun, really. And the stress is on the final two syllables. Docious. Okay, so it's good to pronounce words singly, but it's much better to pronounce the word in context. So here I've got 10 sentences that include the word that we're trying to pronounce. Um, and again, I'd like you to pause this slide and go down through these sentences, practicing saying the word in context. Okay. So I'm going to say the sentence uh, and then I'm going to leave a bit of space for you to say it after me, okay? So number one, English pronunciation is notoriously difficult. Number two, a comfortable sofa. They're not fabulously rich or anything, but they're quite comfortable. You'll need a can of tuna for this recipe. All those children unsupervised sounds to me like a recipe for disaster. Number four, sophisticated statistical analysis was employed to obtain these results. Would you like, sorry, five, would you like an aisle seat or would you prefer to be by the window? You'll find the shampoo and the soap in the fourth aisle from the entrance. Six, does she study classical ballet or modern ballet? Seven, they were warned of the ecological catastrophe to come. The capital city of Scotland is the cosmopolitan city of Edinburgh. Nine, by forming a coalition, the rebels and the opposition parties defeated the government. Number 10. His facetious comment was considered as inappropriate.
Okay, thank you. Um, if you would like to uh, practice more pronunciation, then I've make, made another video which is an introduction to academic words. Um, please click on the link below. Thank you for listening to my presentation slash lesson today. I hope you enjoyed it. Goodbye.